Hello and welcome back to biology. I hope that you guys have had a nice break. I finished off my break today by going for a glorious surf, not with Dr. G, but with Mr. G. And I'm now ready for the term ahead and I hope that you guys are too. Let's get into today's video. It is on protein synthesis. And from QCAA, here are today's learning goals. Number one, to define terms genome and gene. Number two, you will notice has a highlighted section here because the term explain is a higher level cognitive verb, which means we really need to know this section. That is the process of protein synthesis in terms of transcription, two stages. Number two, translation. We will talk about mRNA, amino acids, ribosomes, transfer RNA, codons and anticodons. We will also see that there are different sections to genes, including coding and non-coding sections. And lastly, we will recognize that many functions of non-coding DNA are yet to be determined. So I've seen in class that some of you guys like to write these down and I think that's a really good idea. So you can pause the video here and do that. Let's move on. Transcription and translation. This is taken from 9.1 of your textbook. There's lots of key terms down the side here, which you can read uh, more thoroughly yourself. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered how DNA can result in a phenotypic trait, an observable physical trait such as eye color? In this video, we are going to be talking about how DNA can code for proteins, which can then make that pigment responsible, in this case, uh, for eye color. This process is called protein synthesis. To synthesize something means to construct or create it, in this case, proteins. Proteins are responsible for so many things in the body. Transport, structure, acting as enzymes, which you will know from unit one and two, uh, do a lot of things in the body. Also in protection and in more. Essentially, proteins make up you. And your cells are making proteins right now, even as you watch this video. Our food that we eat is essentially broken down into amino acids. They are assembled into polypeptide chains, which will then make up proteins. There are two key stages in the process of protein synthesis. Number one is transcription. Number two is translation. That is how we go from DNA to messenger RNA to proteins. Let's zoom in on this process now. So DNA has specific sections, regions of DNA made up of nucleotides called genes. The genes code for specific proteins. We copy down the gene into mRNA. We create this message, which then through the process of translation is converted into a protein. I'll point out here that this section transcription, where we wrote this message of that gene occurs in the nucleus, whereas translation occurs in the cytoplasm. So this mRNA moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it is assembled into a protein. The mRNA moves out of the nucleus through what we call nuclear pores. They are these little holes uh, in the membrane of the nucleus. To remember these two key steps, the script in the word transcription means to write because we are writing down this message of the gene into mRNA, which will then be translated from that message into something physical, such as the protein. Another way to remember which step comes first is transcription has a C in it, whereas translation has an L in it, and C comes before L in the alphabet. So if we zoom in on this process again, in eukaryotes, we know that DNA is coiled up 
really, really tightly around histone complexes to form nucleosomes, which form chromosomes. But if we uncoiled those nu nucleosomes, we would see this double helix nature. If we uncoiled that DNA even more, we would see that there's actually a message either side of the DNA made up of complementary base pairs, where A binds to T and G binds to C in DNA. Think back to the end of last term, where we spoke about how DNA replicates. We said helicase, the enzyme, comes and unzips DNA. But then what's the enzyme that comes in and starts adding these nucleotides? It was DNA polymerase. So polymerase is really important in this process of transcription as well. In the process of transcription, which occurs in the nucleus, we have RNA, because we're making RNA, not DNA, RNA polymerase, which comes in, it looks at this particular section of DNA and says, oh yeah, that's a gene, I'm going to make that into a protein. So RNA polymerase comes in and starts creating this message. It copies this strand by creating a complementary strand. So in RNA, we don't have um, thymine, we have uracil, which is represented by the letter U. So DNA, RNA polymerase creates this complementary strand of RNA. It's writing a message. That's why it's called transcription. In us as eukaryotes, there's a few things that happen before this messenger RNA becomes mature and leaves the nucleus to go out into the cytoplasm for it to be translated. Um, one thing that happens is what we call capping, and it's where a methyl group, a methyl is an amino acid, it's a chemical compound. Anyway, a methyl group is added to one end. Then on the other end, we have a group of adenines that create this adenine tail that is called tailing. Uh, furthermore, as you will read in the textbook, there's these non-coding regions of mRNA that are called introns. We used to call introns junk DNA because we didn't know what purpose it served. It wasn't responsible for becoming that functional protein. But we're starting to learn now that they do have a function, these introns, we just don't know what they are exactly. So anyway, what happens is those introns are cut out of the mRNA. They stay within the nucleus. That's why they're called introns. Uh, and what we have left are those extrons. We then splice those together. And now we have a mature strand of messenger RNA that codes for a specific gene that we want to create a functional product of. So through the process of transcription, we get that. Now that message leaves the nucleus through nuclear pores in the nuclear membrane to go out into the cytoplasm where it will then find a ribosome. I'll bring up another image now to explain the process of translation that occurs at the site of a ribosome in the cytoplasm. So here you can see that this big green thing is actually a ribosome. Uh, and they are responsible in making proteins. We have a small subunit and a large subunit. We have this strand of mRNA. Then we have these blue things, which I'll talk about in a sec, as well as these little balls. These balls are amino acids. So here the mRNA flows through the ribosome. The ribosome as we just said, has these two sections that it can flow through. Every three letters in the mRNA, there's the three letters, codes for a different amino acid. And what are amino acids? They are these chemical compounds. They are essentially the building blocks of proteins. These amino acids are picked up 
by tRNA. T stands for, in this case, transfer RNA. And they bring in the amino acids to this section, drop them off to create this polypeptide chain. So tRNA works by binding to the ribosome, dropping off its amino acid, then going out to pick up another. You may wonder how does tRNA know which amino acid to pick up? And I will pull up this image here to show you that, well, it's because of what we call its anticodon. And it's this series of three letters, this triplet of uh, nucleotides that code for every three letters codes for a different amino acid. So we know that in this case, UAC codes for the amino acid methionine. So when methionine needs to be dropped off here, that's when this transfer RNA comes in and drops it off. You might wonder now, how does transfer RNA know when to drop off its amino acid? Because the order of these amino acids, it's what determines what protein it is. And what protein it is determines what gene uh, it is producing. Is that a pigment for eye color or is that a stomach cell to produce hydrochloric acid to break down our food? Well, the answer to that question lies in the anticodon and the codon section of the mRNA. So every three letters in mRNA codes for a different amino acid. It is the codon that is read by the ribosome and that the ribosome sees, okay, AUG, the complementary um, base pairs for AUG is UAC. The anticodon is then read by the transfer RNA and says, okay, I'm up, I need to drop off my amino acid now. So that is how we get this order of polypeptide chains. This polypeptide chain will then fold upon itself to create a functional protein. And remember, different proteins serve different functions. And essentially, it's all these different proteins with different functions that make up you and I. It's quite amazing how scientists have determined which amino acid corresponds to which codon. And I will show you a chart in class in week one that shows uh, how um, triplet codes of mRNA code for which amino acid. So that is transcription and translation in an overview. It is the process of looking at a gene saying, we need to create that. Let's make a message and let's get that message converted into that functional protein. DNA cannot leave the nucleus. That is why messenger RNA comes in, is created through RNA polymerase, which can then leave the nucleus to be translated into that protein. Transfer RNA serves a big role and purpose in that. I will leave it there for this slide, but I will now go to a visual animation of this, which I will talk through and I hope will help you visualize this yourself. So this is found in the description of the video. So you can watch this yourself. I've muted it in this case though, and we'll talk over it uh, myself. So here we go. Yeah, video is about DNA to protein. Here we have a cell. There's about 37 trillion of those in our body. Within the cell, there are organelles. We can see in the center, in this case, there is the nucleus. The nucleus contains our genetic information. We enter into the nucleus through the nuclear pore, and we can now see a chromosome that is the condensed form of DNA. But if we begin to unravel that DNA, we'll see that there are complexes. 
um, DNA wrapped around them is called a nucleosome. If we unwound it even more, we would see this double helix nature. And a particular region of DNA uh, is called a gene. So now begins the process of transcription. That means to write. So RNA polymerase, this big protein, comes in and starts creating this complementary strand of DNA called messenger RNA. So it finds these free floating base pairs in the cytoplasm and creates this strand of messenger RNA. Remember, there's a few things that happen. We take out those non-coding regions. They are called introns. They stay in the nucleus. And then we set extrons. We tap and tail them. Um, cap and tail them. It then leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pores. It's kind of floating around because we're in the cytoplasm now. And it will now find a ribosome. There's a small and the large subunit of the ribosome. Now the messenger RNA floats through that ribosome. Um, here's a little something that is bringing in an amino acid. What could that be? Well, that would be transfer RNA. Uh, transfer RNA has what's called a anticodon on the bottom of it. And that tells it which amino acid to pick up and to drop off. So transfer RNA comes in and drops off its amino acid. It knows when to come in because its anticodon is read by the codon on the mRNA by the ribosome. So the amino acid is dropped off and uh, they begin to stick together, creating this polypeptide chain. That polypeptide chain gets longer and longer until the whole message is read, where it is then cut off, it folds upon itself, condenses and creates now that final gene product that is called um, protein synthesis. And that's it. So I hope that that visual demonstration was helpful. If you'd like to hear the proper uh, narration to it, check out the description for this video. Uh, let's get on to some questions then. Question four from the QCAA uh, stimulus. We have a question on protein synthesis. It is the process of duplicating DNA, forming amino acids directly from DNA. C, synthesizing mRNA from a DNA template. D, synthesizing a chain of amino acids from mRNA. Pause the video here and give that one a go. All right, so protein synthesis is the process of well, synthesizing. It's not just duplicating DNA. It's not just forming amino acids. There's another step, right, it's going into a protein. Um, and it's not simply synthesizing mRNA. These are these are steps of it, but not the whole thing. It is D, synthesizing a chain of amino acids from mRNA, protein synthesis. Next question. Seven, the main purpose of gene expression is to, pause the video here and give that one a go. Gene expression to transcribe a gene, to produce hormones, to maintain homeostasis, or to synthesize a functional gene product. So we know that gene expression is when we take a gene, create a message, send it out of the nucleus to a ribosome to turn that into a, a, uh, a gene product, a protein. Um, so you could pretty much count out, well, genes do so much more than just produce hormones. They could be an eye, for example more than just homeostasis. So if you rule those two out, you should be left with A and D. Um, and the whole outcome is to create a functional gene product. So it's D. Next question. The non-coding regions of DNA, the ends of chromosomes that provide protection during replication are centromeres, telomeres, introns, or 
RNA. I'm going to use this as a teaching tool because I know you don't know what these terms are just yet. Uh, but feel free to pause the video and give it a go now if you'd like. So let's go through some information here. The anatomy of a chromosome is found within a cell within the nucleus. Um, here, that chromosome has been duplicated because there's this X shape, so there's two of them attached together. At the end of them, we have telomeres. We don't know exactly what they do, but we know they have a big part in actually the aging process as well as protecting them. So that's telomeres, the central part that joins the two chromosomes, centro, that's the centromere. Um, introns, we have spoken about this, but they are the sections that are spliced out of mRNA before it leaves the nucleus so that we are just left with the exons. We then um, create the adenine group, we cap and tail it. Um, so introns are that non-coding region of DNA. Lastly, we've spoken about tRNA. They are the, um, the I guess the RNA that <laughs> transfers the amino acid to the ribosome to um, create that series of amino acids called a polypeptide chain. So the non-coding regions at the ends of the chromosome, that would be B, the telomeres. Next question, polygenic inheritance is defined as, again, I will talk through this question, but feel free to pause the video here to give it a go first. All right, poly means more than one. So we're talking about more than one gene inheritance. So we can immediately rule out A, one characteristic controlled by one gene, polygenic we're talking about one characteristic controlled by okay multiple genes that could be a go multiple characteristics controlled by mm -mm, again rule that out d multiple characteristics controlled by multiple genes so it's either b or d the example i want to talk about is eye color we've spoken about in a previous video that eye color is not a simple trait there are many different genes that create that one characteristic. Lastly, there's actually 16 different genes that could res be responsible for eye color. So the answer is B, and I hope that that example helps you to remember. We've done this question before, but I've put it in again because it's a good one. So to find the term gene, pause the video, write it in your own words. Hopefully you have a pretty good description by now. It's a region of DNA made up of nucleotides. That is all for this week. It's a pretty content heavy week though, and we lose a double on Friday due to mob day. I'll have another video coming, but I would like you to read the textbook from 9.1 to 9.3, answer those questions. Check out the video links in this video description. Uh, and then extension is those review questions. So let's make this due Monday, week two. To finish off, uh, here is a graphic by the Amoeba Sisters, which is um, kind of funny if I guess it makes sense, but let me just talk about it for a sec. Uh, you might learn something new here. So here we have three amino acids and they're holding on to these triplets of genetic material. And this one's saying, I'm not trying to start something. It's just, have you ever noticed he has more mRNA codons that code for him? Um, so we know that those codons on mRNA code for a anticodon on transfer RNA, which is coding for a particular amino acid. So the codons on mRNA code for, in short, an amino acid. There's actually um, quite a few different combinations that may code for that one particular amino acid. And leucine, for example, has quite a number of six different combinations that code for him, but um, other amino acids might only have less. So there's something new. God bless you guys. I will see you in class.